Welcome to the first ever case for Cartoon Cop, where I analyze a cartoon and decide if it deserves to be liberated or locked up. It's my duty to protect and preserve the art of making cartoons. Today, let's do a little detective work on one of my favorite shows, a pilot that never went past its first episode. To quote fellow YouTuber Rebel Taxi, But any sort of urban city life cartoon seems to never last long despite how chill they are. Let's take a dip back into the early 2000s. It was a bright new century. New developments brought new forms of technology and new opportunities for a young couple starting out in the animation industry. As a cartoon is very much about the creator, the focus will be on the creators as much as the cartoon itself. This isn't just a story of a failed cartoon pilot. It's the tale of a relationship, heartbreak, broken dreams, and us? We're left wondering what could have been a show that never was, a Kitty Bobo show. Megan Dunn, one of the creators of a Kitty Bobo show, a Korean adoptee to a Jewish couple, a teacher and a nuclear physicist, Dunn made her way creating comics, one squarely named Kimchi Girl, featuring a character named Kitty Bobo. She met her then-husband, Kevin Kaleher, another Korean adoptee. A child genius at the age of 14, Kevin already graduated college by the time he turned 16. He found a connection while traveling in Korea that would prove useful in the near future. Then, someone at Cartoon Network had seen Dunn's work on Kimchi Girl, and they were impressed. Through this combination of luck, word of mouth, and skill, Dunn found herself working in one of the biggest animation studios in the world. Cartoon Network then presented Dunn with a challenge, the big pick. This Friday, it's the Cartoon Cartoon Friday's Big Pick Weekend. It's time once again for you to pick who will be our next Cartoon Cartoon series. Create a show for this programming block, and the winner, chosen by the viewers, becomes a series. With Kevin's foot already in the animation industry, his and Megan's backgrounds in art, comics, animation, and Korea were poised to make their mark. A Kitty Bobo show was born. Now, on to business with one of the cartoons you could make this year's big pick, Kitty Bobo. Kitty Bobo Show would have been about the life of the titular Kitty Bobo and his often clueless attempts in the city to impress his group of friends. I'd rather not spoil the pilot for those who haven't seen it yet, so this summary will be very limited. The pilot episode deals with Kitty Bobo Call me anytime on my cell phone! as he annoys his friends with his newfound technology. Eventually, his antics and lack of awareness catch up to him. Note, this pilot was made back in 2001 and it was definitely ahead of its time. Although it was a bigger deal to have a cell phone back in 2001 than it is in 2018, the problems showcased in this pilot are still relevant today. Yeah. Hey man, are you still using a payphone? Hang on a second. What do you want, Bobo? Yeah, these babies are getting real rare these days. Kitty Bobo was played by Dante Bosco. This was his first breakout role as an animated character and opened up more opportunities for him to play more well-known characters in the animation industry. Often unaware of social standards and customs, Kitty Bobo values acceptance and appearing cool over anything. He is really cool. Not as cool as I am. I have a cell phone. That makes me cooler. Kitty's groups of friends includes Maggie, a potential love interest to Kitty Bobo, Paul, an easygoing dog, and Monkey Carl, an introverted music enthusiast. Kitty's friends act as supplementary devices towards the plot, providing appropriate reactions or serving as accomplices towards his plans to quote, become cool. What I would have liked from this pilot is connecting dialogue showcasing friendlier interactions between the four. While they are established as friends shown hanging out in different locations, a friendlier tone would have added much more to the relaxed mood of the pilot. I feel like everybody was a little bit too mean. There was not a drop of creative exhaustion with the crew. Lots of thought was put into this pilot, and it shows. A Kitty Bobo show, as a result, ended up very aesthetically pleasing. The art style is reminiscent of 20th century expressionist paintings, primarily due to its muted pastel color choices and quick brushstrokes. 
Chalk composition was very advanced for a cartoon of its time, and a lot of thought and effort was put into it. Take note of this rack focus and how it returns focus to the characters the writers wanted the audience to pay attention to. This warp shot gives the illusion of exhaust from buses and cars from an outside perspective. One interesting feature was this layering effect during the movie scene, with the movie in the foreground and Kitty in the background. Although it was completely unnecessary for the pilot's plot as a whole, it really shows that the creative team went the extra mile. Character design was primarily based off of Dunn's work on Kimchi Girl, usually with round heads and long rectangular legs extending to the floor. Her designs give a sense of structure and change, with a mix of both rounded shapes and rectangular based torsos slash appendages. Background characters are given similar shades of colors to highlight their roles as background characters, bringing focus onto the main characters. Characters that have important dialogue or actions are given contrasted color clothing. For example, Kitty has yellow fur, but a blue shirt and dark blue pants. This color scheme, interestingly enough, is also seen on his father, suggesting a close relationship with his son versus the mother. Kitty's mother and Maggie feature a similar color scheme, with light pink fur, a red top, and navy blue pants. Maybe this could secretly suggest a future relationship between Maggie and Kitty. Was this part of Dunn's and Kaleher's relationship? Paul's fur color is purple, while his clothing is based in green. Maggie and Monkey Carl are given the same color family, but continued the contrasting shades of colors in order to stand out. Main characters never blend into the backgrounds and are able to stand out despite occasionally having the same color palette. Contrasting colors are a common theme in good character design. These techniques can be seen on other well-known characters. While some of the background line art appears to seem disjunct, this works well with the artistic design of the characters. The expressionist line quality brings the characteristics of congested and often chaotic city life into view, and is reminiscent of drawings created by children. The musical direction supplements what is happening on screen. Um, never mind. Yeah, man. Right. As an attestment to the ending of the show, the credits theme features declining diminuendoed chromatic scale. Shifting of musical themes works in tandem with the characters on screen, and even features a trill to highlight the climaxing action. Not crazy, just really cool. In other words, this pilot is pretty good. Hey everybody, quick disclaimer before we start the last part, um, I recorded this part on a separate day and I'm getting sick so I <laughs> I really wanted to get this part done with so excuse my uh, congested sound. It's the end of the big pick. Who won back in 2001? You may have heard of it. Congratulations to the kids next door! The winner of this year's big Real life really has a happy ending and this was no exception. Although it was left in the number two slot, a second episode of Kitty Bobo was ordered, but was never produced. A couple years after the show's production, Dunn and Kayla Heard divorced. Kevin went on to do some odd jobs related to game development and is now an independent developer. In 2006, he attempted to pitch Kitty Bobo to Disney, but was never picked up. Some new redesign ideas included Kitty Bobo being a younger age at 12 years old and a structural redesign featuring a new character named Alice Rat. According to Kayla Herr, this would be an homage to Tom and Jerry, with Kitty Bobo attempting to win Alice over as a recurring joke each episode. One episode idea pitched was The First Job, which would feature Kitty Bobo or Maggie getting a job, but it was never developed beyond an idea in these concept art pieces. One suggested idea to the lore I found was a game called Mouthball, whose rules and plans can be found at kittybobo.com. What up, guys? Around 2010, Dunn went on to create Dunamic, her very own animation studio. She even attempted to create her own animated series, Chloe and the Stars. However, even with official backing by big names like Frederator Studios and Rebel Taxi, the audience was simply not interested. For some unknown reason between 2016 and 2017, Dynamic may have closed. Their social media pages are rarely ever updated, so it's hard to tell if they're truly closed or not. 
One review on Indeed suggests that investors and the startup nature of this company contributed to this, but it's hard to come up with a conclusive answer. Their domain is up for sale, and Dunn herself has a very limited presence online, so it's hard to say if they're still operating. What this show could have been is left up to speculation, or maybe some lucky alternate universe where this show won. While I highly prefer Kitty Bobo to Kids Next Door as an adult, it's not unreasonable to see why Kitty Bobo lost. For example, if you were a child in the early 2000s and had a choice between a slice of life comedy and an action packed spy themed thriller, I believe most kids would have chosen the Kids Next Door, 2001 me included. If the show had come out today instead of 2001, it honestly would have done much better. The Kitty Bobo Show was a refreshing look from the bold line Sunday strip cartoons during the era. By all means, this show deserves to be liberated. Here's a link to the pilot. Now, go give the creators and the creations some love. And maybe with enough demand, we'll even get Kitty Bobo Episode 2.